Ever wondered about the blood-soaked sands where gladiators battled for life, honor, and spectacle? Or considered the clash of steel, the roars of the crowd, the tension between heroism and tragedy that defined their existence? Let's journey back in time, wander into the Colosseum, and explore their lives. We'll unearth how they trained, what weapons they wielded, and the distinctive codes that govern their bouts. From the brutal struggles of the enslaved to the daring risks taken by volunteers, we're plunging deep into the heart-stopping world of gladiator combat. In this video, we're examining the question, were gladiators real heroes or tragic victims? Ready to join the expedition? Before we dive in, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss an update. Types of Gladiators Ever wonder about the wild diversity of gladiators who squared off in heart-stopping duels? The gladiatorial games boasted a whole roster of these fearsome fighters, each with a unique set of weaponry, armor, and combat tactics. Let's step into the bustling heart of ancient Rome and get a ringside view of these extraordinary combatants, Samnites. Borrowing their name from Rome's old adversaries, the Samnites, these gladiators were some of the earliest and most revered. Suited up in a visor, a plumed helmet, and a large shield, they swung their short swords against their heavily armed gladiators in an epic clash of steel. Thracians Hailing from the lands of Southeast Europe, the Thracians were notorious for their fearsome battle skills. Brandishing a small round shield and a curved dagger known as a sika, they aimed for the jugular or went for the kill with deadly slashes to their enemy's legs, often crossing swords with the fish-crested Myrmelones. Myrmelones, sporting helmets crowned with fish-shaped crests, the Myrmelones carried a sword and a compact round shield. Often pitted against the Thracians, these gladiators boasted a combat style as fierce as their fish-inspired helmets. Rediari Net-wielding gladiators, aptly named after the Latin word for net, the Rediari danced in the arena, net in one hand, trident in the other, and a light tunic for armor. Their opponents? The heavily armored yet less agile Secutors. Secutors, known as pursuers in Latin, Secutors chased the Rediari across the sands, their helmets sleek and their eye holes narrow to avoid entanglement in the Rediari's net. Andabate A bit of a mystery. The Andabate are believed to have fought blindfolded on horseback, possibly offering a dash of comic relief or novelty to the crowd. Dimicari Hailing from the Imperial era, the Dimicari brandished a short sword in each hand, forsaking armor for nimbleness and agility. Esidari Taking inspiration from the chariot-wielding ancient Britons, the Esidari hurled javelins from their chariots, jumping off to engage in close combat when necessary. Hoplomachi Borrowing their name from the Greek for armed fighter, the Hoplomachi came to the arena in full armor, mimicking the Greek hoplites with their helmet, shield, spear, and sword. Lachieri The Lachieri, named after the Latin term for lasso, added a unique twist to the gladiatorial combat. They capture their enemies with a lasso and finish them off with a dagger or sword. This is but a glimpse into the varied, blood-drenched world of Roman gladiators. Each type had its own strengths, weaknesses, and fan clubs, but all shared a common chilling truth. They lived by the sword and often died by it. Organization of the Games Continuing our journey into the heart of the Colosseum, Let's peel back the curtain on the intricate workings behind the Gladiator Games. Far from impromptu or random, these epic events required meticulous planning, coordination, and regulation from various strata of Roman society. Let's delve into how announcements were made, sponsors involved, schedules followed, and regulations enforced in these magnificent spectacles. Announcements These pulse-pounding spectacles were heralded several days in advance. Detailed bills were plastered onto the facades of houses and public structures, broadcasting important specifics like the time, date, and location of the upcoming games. They would highlight the gladiatorial lineup, their fighting styles, and previous records. Colorful street vendors hawking copies of these bills would add their shouts to the pre-event buzz, painting a vivid picture of the impending bloodshed. Sponsorship Largely bankrolled by Rome's elite, magistrates, emperors, nobles, these games were a grandiose display of wealth and power. 
These sponsors, known as editores or munerales, held the responsibility of covering the expenses, which included the gladiators, exotic beasts, extravagant prizes, and lavish decorations. Motives for sponsorships varied, from fulfilling religious obligations, commemorating a lost loved one, celebrating a milestone, curing public favor, or simply flaunting their opulence and status. Schedule. The games danced to the beat of the Roman religious and political calendar. Some events like the Ludi Romani in September and the Ludi Megalensis in April were annual spectacles while others were tied to sporadic celebrations like a general's triumph or an emperor's birthday. Depending on the event and sponsor's resources, the games could span a day or stretch across several weeks or months. Typically, the carnage would begin in the morning and conclude by afternoon with the midday intermission for lunch and some light-hearted amusement. Regulation An essential pillar of this grand spectacle was the role of the referees, or summe rudis, and secunde rudis. They wielded a wooden stick, or rudis, as a symbol of their authority, setting the rules, determining matchups, and deciding the fate of the gladiators. Apart from ensuring fair play, they doubled as coaches and trainers for the gladiators. Their judgment could pause a fight declare a victor or a loser, and even determine whether a defeated gladiator would live or die. This behind-the-scenes exploration underscores the intricate machinery that drove the gladiatorial games in ancient Rome. These spectacles were not just about blood and death. They demanded immense resources, skill, and coordination, and they were a testament to Roman order and discipline. Far beyond the visceral thrill of combat, they offered a mirror into the societal norms and values of this bygone era. Life and Death of the Gladiators Beyond the arena's blood-soaked sand, let's delve deeper into the precarious life thread of these valiant gladiators. These shows weren't just spectacles for eager spectators, they were the lifeblood of the gladiators themselves, a pendulum between life and death, heavily veiled by challenges, hardships, and a unique set of beliefs and values. So come, let's explore the intricate tapestry of a gladiator's existence in ancient Rome. Training Gladiators were meticulously honed in dedicated schools, the Ludus Gladiatorius. Here, under the stern gaze of the Laniste, the owners, and Doctoris, the trainers, they were chiseled into formidable fighting machines, subjected to rigorous training and strict obedience. The schools were structured in sections or barracks according to the type of gladiators, where every day was a grueling gauntlet of practicing with wooden weapons and dummies until they were primed for the real stage. Diet The gladiator's diet was a hefty serving of high-protein foods like barley, beans, meat, and cheese. Their regimen included a unique concoction of vinegar and ashes, purported to fortify their bones and muscles. Mealtimes thrice a day turned into feasts in the communal dining halls, the gladiators gulping down every morsel, never knowing which meal could be their last. Medical Care Despite their brutal lifestyle, gladiators had access to dedicated medical care, doctors and surgeons who were proficient in treating their wounds. They had a line to medicines and herbs for relief and healing, treated in infirmaries near their schools or arenas. The urgency of their treatment lay in their role as valuable assets whose performance bore heavily on their land estate's reputation and profits. Legal and Social Status Shackled in societal chains, most gladiators were slaves, war prisoners, or criminals, devoid of rights or freedoms. Bound by contracts or oaths, their destiny lay in the hands of their land estate. Their gladiatorial identity was tattooed or branded onto their bodies, and they lived under societal scorn as infames, disreputable, and polluti, polluted. They were outcasts, even in death, buried separately from the rest of society. Religion. Gladiators clung to their unique religious beliefs, often venerating deities associated with strength, war, or commerce, like Hercules, Mars, or Mercury. They forged bonds of loyalty with their Lanistae and fellow gladiators, with whom they shared familial ties. Each bout in the arena was flanked by prayers and sacrifices, seeking protection, victory, or forgiveness. Amulets and charms were a common accessory, believed to bring luck and ward off misfortune. Ethics and Sentiments Amid the clash of steel and roar of the crowd, a complex ethical and emotional code governed the gladiators. Some sought honor, courage, and respect from the audience. 
Others used guile, cruelty, or cowardice to survive at any cost. Respect for opponents was juxtaposed against hatred and mockery. For some, the gladiatorial life was a prized stage, while others saw it as a cage, yearning for freedom or the release of death. In the kaleidoscope of existence, gladiators in ancient Rome walked a perilous tightrope, with danger and injury a constant shadow. Yet amidst the brutality, they carved a niche of remarkable resilience and talent, captivating thousands of spectators. More than victims of a ruthless society, they emerged as the shining heroes of a culture that both celebrated and condemned them. We hope you enjoyed this thrilling journey into the gritty and glorious world of Roman gladiators. Your subscription allows us to bring more such intriguing insights from the past. What struck you the most about the life of gladiators? Was it their rigorous training, their unique diet, or the tightrope walked between life and death they performed each day? Do share your thoughts in the comments section below. Stay tuned for more deep dives into history's most fascinating corners. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future explorations. Until our next historical adventure, take care.